Welcome to the Naked Podcaster. Get ready to hear the story of someone strong enough to bear it all. The Naked Podcaster is a representation of freeing yourself, giving you permission to be real in all your quirkiness, baggage, struggles to success, and tragedy to triumph. I'm so excited you're joining the journey. Your past doesn't define you, but it does lead you on a path to today. Let's get naked. Hello and welcome to the Naked Podcaster. This is Jen Taylor and today I have Sydney Nanberg on. Sydney, how are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I'm thrilled. I'm I'm super excited because I love what you're doing. I think there's such a need for it. So I want to jump right in there. Your oh, website. Thank you. You're welcome. Your website is sydneynanberg.com. It's your name and we'll have that in the show notes. Yes. Tell me. Yes. Tell me all about it. So sydneynanberg.com is a basically a resource that I wanted to build because it's something that I wanted when I, I wish I would have had when I was growing up. Um, it's basically all of the lessons that I've learned in a blog, podcast, Facebook community, Instagram page, um, just everything I've learned in life. When I was growing up, I was bullied really badly, um, but I always had this dream in the back of my mind where I was like, I, I'm, it's going to be okay, and I need to help people, and I want to make an impact, and I want to make a difference and show people that anything is possible, and I know that sounds super generic, but, you know, little Sydney, that's kind of where it like, stepped from. So when I was 20 years old, I was at the University of Arizona and I was like, you know what, I'm not happy and this is not my path. And so I decided, you know, if I could do anything in the world right now, what would it be? And it was to drop out of school and it was to move to Miami Beach by myself. And I started a marketing agency at 20 years old um, and I I grew it and I, I'm, I still own it to this day. But then SydneyNanberg.com was always just my it was my passion. And it started as an anti-bullying campaign because going back to the bullying, I was bullied badly. um, And I wanted to help prevent suicides. But instead, it's kind of shifted into this self-care brand where I share all the lessons that I've learned, long story short. So that's kind of what it is. I love, you do one thing very differently. You do wellness reviews. How did that, (sighs) tell me how that got started. Actually, that started in March. I was in Spain with my family, and I feel like sometimes when you're traveling, like I'm a very creative person, so I feel like sometimes when you're traveling or you're in a different environment, all these different ideas spark, right? And so I was walking around, and I was like, I need to make this different because so many people have self-care and wellness blogs and brands, and mine was already an anti-bullying campaign from a different angle to help people live a fulfilling life, right? So that was already different, but I was like, I need a little bit more of a twist. And it just came, I was like, you know what? I love the spa. I love wellness treatments. I'm really into, you know, finding holistic solutions for stress and anxiety and depression and all of those things that we, a lot of people deal with in their day-to-day life. And I was like, you know what? I want to review different wellness treatments. And so that's exactly what I have been doing. Um, so I reviewed, you know, different types of massages, uh, different types of cryotherapy. I did a, um, what's it called? The float pod. I'm, and I have a bunch more coming up, so it's kind of new, but I want to show people, you know, what works, what doesn't work, what's worth investing your money in, you know, because there's so much out there, but like, does it actually work? Like, you know, sometimes it's great to go for a massage. It's super relaxing, but it's more, it's more than that. Like there are so many different types of wellness treatments, you know, there's acupuncture, there's, there's everything. So I just want to do everything and let people know what I really think so that when they're like in need, like if they're anxious, if they're stressed, if they're depressed, they can go to my site and they can go to stress reviews or stress wellness treatments, you know, and they can see all the ones that I like that are Sydney approved and they can go to it and, and they'll know, you know, if this is the real deal or not, or if it's actually going to help. These are things that just help me and I do it so that it can hopefully help other people. I mean, take one for the team by getting a couple massages on my behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, I, it's not bad. I like going, but the truth is that I've had so many different kinds now where I'm like, you know what, actually 
this one, if I'm af- if I'm ever super anxious, I know to go to this specific type of massage. I know that, you know, if I need a boost of energy, you know, I need to do whole body cryotherapy. But if I'm in pain and I have so much tension that I need to do local cryotherapy, if I know that I, you know, have had an extremely stressful week and I'm feeling kind of down, then like acupuncture is where it's at. You know, I want to know those things because there's so much out there that I you know, I've done so many of these treatments, but like, I've never really reviewed them. So now it's just like an organized way for me to share with people what I wanted, what I, what I wanted to know. It's like, which do you do? Which do you invest in? Which is worth it? Um, and which actually works? Cause there's a lot of hype around a lot of these, you know, treatments. So like, you know, how do you know? So that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm letting I people love- know. I, I, and I'm glad because that would be the place that I would want to look there. It is overwhelming. You get inundated with it is the best. Uh, this it's, is the best. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know what? It is super overwhelming because it's like, there's just so much out there. It's like, you think of a massage. Okay. You go for a massage, but this is like the more in-depth version where it literally goes through specific types of massages and what it's good for. And what I, the biggest thing that I put in there is what I, what you're supposed to like, uh, I gained from it, but what I actually did benefit from it. Like, what did I actually feel afterwards? Because that's like a real person telling you, okay, they say this, this and that, but like, I felt this way and this is what it relieved. And someone told me, you know, you should go do a cryofacial. So a cryotherapy facial, for example, I'm really big into that. And I think that's a huge huge for stress and anxiety I've learned and they were like it's great for migraines and I suffer from migraines and I was like okay we'll see I was like it's I mean yeah it sounds great to have like cold air on your face for 12 minutes but like does it actually take it away and I went and it did and I would recommend that to anybody who suffers from migraines or you know or who has who anyone who has acne I mean that's not stress or anxiety but it kind of goes hand in hand it's just good to know from a real person because there are so many articles out there it's insane. So this is just an easy resource. My whole blog and community and podcast, it's a resource for all things self-care and wellness. And it came from you being bullied as a kid, which I can't wait to get into that, but there's always a correlation. Yeah. There's always a correlation with what you're doing. I, I love that you started out with, hey, other people shouldn't be bullied. I know how it feels and we need to do something about right. this too. Okay, yeah, but now you're, you're also doing something with the aftermath of being bullied, the anxiety, um, suicide intervention, all of that stuff, because right. that's all a domino effect from the bullying. It's also a domino effect from other things too. So like I haven't personally experienced bullying to, it didn't impact me in a way that, that gave right. me anxiety or it wasn't my issue. Right. But that mm-hmm. doesn't mean other things aren't. So even though your platform began from anti-bullying and it is still, it remains, I could still get a lot out of all of your information equally as much as somebody going there for, from a bullying standpoint. And so that part I love self-care, self-care people. You yeah, know. exactly. And you know, the thing is that it when I first started this, so it, it is kind of confusing because I always tell people, yeah, my mission is to prevent suicides, but it's also to help people live a fulfilling life because bullying is more than just, you know, you're a little kid and people say mean things to you, right? And we can dive more into what actually happened to me, but we sometimes we bully ourselves, you know, it's like mm. that internal negative self-talk. That's a form of bullying too. So these lessons can apply to so many people. And when I first started this, you know, sydneynanberg.com, initially I was actually interviewing victims of bullying and I was having them share their story. So this was before my podcast and everything. We did it all over video. I did so many interviews and I was like, you know what? There are so many campaigns out there that are anti-bullying. There are so many self care blogs that are out there that it's I mean it's great but like how do you really get through to people because at the end of the day bullying comes from people who are internally unhappy or facing a struggle or dealing with something something in life you know so how do you get to that deeper root of the issue and help them resolve it because that's really a reflection of how you feel so that's why that's how it kind of stemmed into the self-care thing with a twist and wellness blog and resource for people to go to when they need, you know, tools to feel inspired or, you know, if they're anxious or stressed or depressed, I mean, it all kind of goes hand in hand. You're not going to bully someone if you're feeling happy and good on the inside. And I think that when kids are being bullied, there's so many reasons they could be dealing with their own personal issues. It could come from home. 
you know, they could see how their parents treat them or how their parents treat each other. There are so many factors, right? But bullying is more than just people calling names. You can be bullying yourself. And that's the biggest thing. So I was like, you know what? We need to do this differently. Like I need to make a bigger impact and I need to help people live a fulfilling life because if they do, then that negativity will kind of, I don't want to say fade away because there will always be negativity, but it'll kind of subside a little bit You'll because people will start to feel better about themselves. So I'm coming at it from a different angle. I love that. And you're right. People aren't, you're not going to bully someone if you're happy. I'm, you no, know, you're, you're not, you're not going to, you're not going to, there won't be any negative self-talk. There, it'll, it eliminates all kinds of things. If you just, it'll eliminate a lot. It'll yeah. help you. It'll help to inspire people. So that's really where it comes from. I mean, yeah, there's so many forms of bullying. And so this, yeah, I've realized as I've done this, that this resource can help a lot of people. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. I love it. So let's take me back Thanks. now. Take me okay. back to little Sydney. Okay, so I am 25 years old right now. I'm from Chicago, and I um, I live in Miami now, though. But I um, I was bullied from I I don't even know what age I was. <laughs> I, I, I always say like in a lot of my posts, like around 12 because it, but it started way before then. Um, and I would go to school and basically come home crying every single day. I was constantly called fat and ugly and stupid. I had someone tell me they didn't like my nose, my teeth or my face. Um, I was so painfully shy that when I'd speak in school, uh, people would just, laugh at me or be like, Oh my God, I thought she was mute. Um, I just had all of those kinds of things happen to me. So I suffered in school, um, with my grades. So therefore I didn't believe in myself because I just was not focused. Um, and I really struggled. So, you know, if I, if we're being totally real, there were times where I questioned, you know, do what's the point of me living? Um, and in those moments, even as a little kid, I thought, no, there is a purpose. In my gut feeling, I was like, you know what? No. Like I knew that I needed to do something one day. I knew one day I was going to do something. I didn't know what. So in those moments, I somehow stopped myself. Um, but I had a really hard time growing up and it wasn't until I was 19 or 20 in college when I decided like enough is enough. Like I'm going after it right now. And I made the big decision and I moved, but growing up was, it was tough. I mean, well, I, I, it was just my, the friends that I was around, they weren't very good friends. I was just that, I was that kid that was picked on and, um, it was hard. And that's kind of where a lot of this stemmed from. And I lacked confidence. And it's just, it, it, it was, when I look back, I, I'm a, to, total, a completely different person, but I couldn't, I just didn't believe in myself with anything. And my, I just, I had zero self-esteem. It was, it was not a fun time in my life. I've seen pictures of you. And also you're like some of my kids' age. I have a daughter who's 27. And so... Aww. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I see pictures of you and I'm like, oh my gosh, how could anybody do that? You're beautiful. And oh, thank you. Know, you. You're know, you welcome. So I, but I, I, so were, were the bullies saying that you were fat and I get it. I mean, you're going to be too tall, too short, too thin, too fat. You're right. are too big or too small. Like you'll never, oh, for sure. you will never look right as far as a physical bullying situation. Mm -hmm. Um, everyone in every demographic is getting bullied and made fun of and stuff like that. Did you have for to, sure? Was it eating stuff? Were you overweight? Was it just? Uh, I no. I, okay, I wasn't overweight. Um, I you know had my awkward phase for sure. Um, but no, and what ha ended up happening was that because I was picked on so much for whatever reason, I mean, I, I feel like I, like I look back at myself and I see like, oh my God, because I was bullied, I look back and I see, oh, there's that ugly kid. But then sometimes I'm like, you know what? Actually, it just looked like a normal kid. And then, but what happened was from all of that, you know, abuse, I guess, verbal abuse, I ended up having an eating disorder. So 
so I would either starve myself or I would binge eat. I became a vegetarian in sixth grade. I told my parents that I saw a video in school of animals being abused, which I did. And I love animals, but that's not the reason I became a vegetarian. Um, you know, I, I suffered from severe anxiety because of that. I ended up gaining weight. Um, because of the binge eating part of it. But then all of a sudden I lost a lot of weight and I just, I always felt like I had to change myself and, um, you know, it, it no, I, it, but to go back to your question, I was just a normal kid, but it, it caused me to take action and do like an eating disorder, which really has nothing to do with food, but like it, it caused me to either overeat or undereat and try to change myself constantly. <laughs> It was yeah, crazy. Of course, because people are telling you something and you want to fit in and be like, because you're just a normal kid. And even as adults, I mean, it doesn't matter. We all want to be right. seen and valued and appreciated. And when you're not and you get bombarded with those things, of course, especially as a kid, you want to be, you want to make other, make everybody happy and make yourself happy. Today. That's the whole thing. Yeah. You want to fit in. Right. My my daughter's going into fourth grade in a couple of weeks, and she's like, I think I look Aww. a lot like you. And so I, fi- I, have, I, I have a picture of me in fourth grade, and I showed it to her, and she's like, oh, my gosh, that looks so goofy, and she's laughing. And I'm like, oh, you just wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. <laughs> hey, we all, I mean, it's, right? little kids look like little kids. Yeah, it's, I mean. <laughs> It's, it's, it is what it is, right? I'm like, I was the, I was the most badass, hot looking fourth grader ever. What are you talking about? I <laughs> bet we got a kick out of that. I, I mean, I remember fourth grade though, at, or whatever age we're talking. It doesn't matter. I mean, I think junior high school are the two years that would be great for every person in history to skip. You know, but oh, you know, uh, yeah, oh, those were the, those brutal. were the years. Those right. Were, I actually. Those were the years, but high school was bad. I had to switch high schools actually because of bullying. So I mean, it was, yeah. Junior, oh, but if we could skip yeah. junior high school, I mean, that would be really nice. Right. I mean, if, I, if you had to pick two years, <laughs> yes. If you're, yeah, but you know what? The best part is with my mentality is that I don't regret it for a second, and I really feel that everything happens for a reason. I feel like I was meant to be in that position to be able to do what I'm doing today, and if I wasn't, then I w- I wouldn't be here and doing what I'm doing now is what leaves me feeling fulfilled in life, being able to share what I know. And, you know, I'm still on the, I still have anxiety. I still have these things, but it doesn't stop me from going after what I want. And that's the whole purpose of this is to inspire people. And, you know, although junior high and elementary school and even high school, even though it was pretty, pretty rough and it caused a lot of um, emotional issues, um, I'm, I try to be grateful for it, for every lesson that I've learned, whether it's like a a mistake or a failure or something negative happens to me, because if it didn't, I mean, you can't see it in the moment, but like Steve Jobs said, I don't know exactly how he said it, but like you can only connect the dots once you're looking back. You can't connect the dots looking forward. So while you're going through something, it might seem like the worst thing in the world, but at the same time, there's a reason for it. And sometimes we just don't know what it is in the moment. I want to go back and talk about you being moved from high school. I have a whole bunch of things that I want to ask you about some okay. of what you just said. But take me okay. back to what happened in high school that made it so that you actually switched. Switching schools is a pretty big deal. Yeah. So, you know, I went to school with the same, the same people from elementary school up until high school. So it was kind of just like the same thing on a daily basis that continued into high school to the point where... I was extremely depressed. I, I did, you know, I, if I'm going to be open about it because it's what I do, but considered suicide. Um, I was really suffering from an eating disorder. I just, my, I was really going downhill fast and there, there, something needed to change. You know, I'd go to school and I would come home. Like I would, I would try to get out of going to school every single day. I was afraid to go to school because I was so afraid of the people that I was surrounded with. It was really, really unhealthy. Um, and when I would, try, as I got older, I would try to stand up for myself and it would only make things worse. And it was like, I, I couldn't take it anymore. And so I had to switch, I had to switch schools. I mean, it, it, it just got to a point where I don't know what would have happened if I stayed there. Um, it basically, actually the movie Mean Girls is based on the area where I grew up. 
Um, and I forget who, who wrote it, but they grew up in that area. So like, and have you seen the movie Mean Girls? Oh, yes. Yeah. So like they reference a lot of things in my area. Um, uh, so it's based on that. That's basically the, the area where I grew up. Everybody was entitled and privileged and just, you know, just really, it was, it was, uh, it was just, it was pretty rough. But what I find interesting now, looking back, actually, after I switched schools and we've all grown up, is that some of these people have actually reached out to me. Some of these people went to the same college that I went to, went to University of Arizona, and they were super nice. And they would tell me how much they hated school at that time. And these are people that bullied me. And I'm like, and you see that they were actually struggling at the time. Like I, I was talking to my boyfriend, uh, it must have been last week or the week before, and we looked up this girl who really used to bully me. She used to call me fat all the time. She used to tell me, uh, she would write me hate letters. She would, you know, tell me she was always better than me. Just all these nasty things every single day. And I went to her Facebook page, and she used to be this, like, really pretty, skinny girl. Like, this is not coming from a place of judgment. I looked at her Facebook page and noticed today she's she's pretty heavy and I don't judge her but what and what's interesting is that her whole uh news feed on Facebook is all about eating disorders and how people need to understand eating disorders. And that made me think back to my childhood like this girl was constantly putting me down for my weight and how I looked and my appearance yet look at what she's going through now maybe something deeper was going on. So, you know, I mean, it's just, I, so I mean, I know this all, your question was about why I switched high schools, but. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I like it. But there's, I think, there's so much that goes into it. There really is with these situations. I think often, or probably mostly, bullies are acting out because of something that's going on with them. That doesn't make it okay, though, to treat no, someone it, else it so do- horribly. It, it, it doesn't. And, and it did cause me to have to switch high schools. And when I switched high schools, it was much better. But it, um, you know, I still struggled because I was painfully shy. I had all these insecurities. And then it got to a point where it started happening at that school. Um, I wanted to go to the University of Arizona. And, you know, like I said, I grew up in an area where people were, it was like the movie Mean Girls. The two schools were pretty much, they were the same. They're in the same area. They're five minutes apart from each other. And um, people, like, I always felt like I was less than everybody. And so when I went to, chose to go to University of Arizona, it's because I wanted to go where the warm weather was. I really loved the school. I had family that went there. And people would tell me, oh, do you have a disability or something? Or, like, are you stupid? Like, why would you go to a school like that? Do you have special needs? And I was like, no, I really just want to go there. And it's just... It's, it's people's insecurities. It's 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 like the movie Mean Girls, basically. Yeah. That's that's how I grew up. <laughs> did your parents know a lot about the journey and your struggles, and were on board in switching you? How did that interaction go? Yeah. So my parents were there uh, with me every step of the way. They were super supportive. Um, they were the ones that uh, wrote the letters to let me switch school, like help me to switch schools. Um, and they, you know, my parents were big on letting my, I have a younger brother, letting us handle our own problems because a lot of these kids' parents would handle the problems for their kids. My parents knew what was going on with me, but they figured, you know, for my future, it's probably best if I learn how to handle these situations. So my parents would step in when it was appropriate, but a lot of it I learned how to handle on my own. And I'm really grateful for that. Um, I have a very close family too. So it didn't come from a place of them not caring. So, you know, there, there was like this one point where these girls were telling me I looked like a hippo and I had, you know, making fun of me every day. And I went and said something to the principal and they didn't say anything or do anything. And then my mom would step in. Or I had this one teacher who asked me if I was deaf and told me I was stupid because I would ask questions that she already gave the answer to. I just didn't understand. Then my mom would step in. Um, you know, but if it's a, someone calling me fat or ugly, you know, or something like that, they taught me at home, you know, how to stand up for myself and not, you know, how to take care of myself and basically just kind of inspired me that there's more to life than just school and where I'm at in the moment. And that's really what helped me get through because for them to call the parents, which occasionally they did, I mean, it just wouldn't, 
well, it wouldn't make a difference. It, so what they did, I believe, to this day was was the right thing. And so I'm really grateful for them. I agree. I think it's a balance between kids learning to kind of take care of things for themselves and the moment that it's time to step in. So I think that's a really oh, yeah, good balance. Sure. It's, I'm glad that they knew and that they were supportive. I, the, the alternative is that they weren't supportive and didn't know or were part of the issue. I mean, so the, you were in a really good place as far as that went. It wasn't, there was With nothing family, coming from home. Yes. Right. No, you know, I, my, my younger brother and I have a good, a good relationship today now, but when I, at home, you know, we definitely, if I'm going to be open, we had our fair share of like, I'm sure every family, but of arguments and things. And my brother would kind of add fuel to the fire. I don't really talk about this much, but you know, I'd come home and I'd eat something and he'd, he'd say, you know, are you going to eat any more? Cause you're fat enough. And honestly, I look back at pictures. I was never really like that. I was never like overweight or anything. Like I just, my brother would, and it would rile things up at home then, and then there would be arguments, and like, you know, I, I'm sure this happens to a lot of siblings, you know, they fight, or like, you know, girls who have younger brothers, it's just that younger brother thing, now it's not like that, but um, there was that, um, but other than that, I do come from a supportive family, but it was, you know, there was nothing that they could do during the day while, you know, I was at school, I just kind of had to I had to do it. Um, I had to go on my own. Um, it was tough, but they I'm were just, there. They were supportive. I'm glad it was just normal, brotherly, <laughs> obnoxious brotherly yeah. stuff growing up, and that you had the support of your parents. And yeah, of course, especially the older you get, the more you're taking care of it on your own. But it's good that you had their support when you needed it. So that that's fantastic. I did. Moving yeah, forward, no, did. you went to University of Arizona. I did. Yes. For two years. Lead into that. And I, I want to touch at some point, I'd love to go into the eating disorder more. Okay. And we can actually segue into that by talking about when you needed to get help for it, when you realized it was an issue and how. But so, because I don't know your order and your story, take me through. Okay. Start me in college and just make sure we jump in with the eating. I think eating disorders are so much more common than we realize. And people, it's not something people commonly talk about. So you have suicidal no, thoughts and right. eating disorder and you are afraid to go to school and then you end up going where you want. So tie some of this in for us. Take us through. Yeah. So first of all, I'm glad you're bringing that up because I, I just talked to someone the other day who I actually interviewed them and um, they dealt with an eating disorder and we were talking about how so many people deal with it, yet no one really talks about it. And you know what I noticed is that when people talk about it, a lot of people who, who haven't experienced it or don't understand tend to say like, oh yeah, that's not an issue. Everyone has an eating disorder. Someone said that actually the other day. And I was like, you know, it's actually a really, really big deal and it can be very dangerous to your health and can cause a lot of problems. So um, I'm really glad we're talking about this. But I would say it started when I was probably 12 and it started by me becoming a vegetarian and trying to starve myself because I didn't think that I was like everybody else. I thought I was fat. And so I just wanted to be like everybody else. And I think that's the root of the issue because like I said before, an eating disorder is not about food, but it was about food in the moment. You know, as you're going through it, it's like, okay, I don't want to eat this. And you don't realize what the root is. The root was that I just wanted to be like everyone else. So it started when I was 12, became a vegetarian starved myself. Um, and then all of a sudden I started binge eating. Then I started at, this is like kind of like my timeline as I was getting older. So this was like on and off, I would start binge eating. Then I would start chewing food and spitting it out. And then, you know, when I was right before I graduated, I, I stopped, I basically, I, I would, before I graduated high school, I, I would say I pretty much stopped eating. I lost like 30 pounds. Um, and I, it, it was, it was really bad. Um, I did go to therapy for it, um, before I went to college on and off, but it never really got me anywhere. Um, I went away to school my freshman year, um, 
I actually had, I, then I dealt with other health issues. My freshman year, I ended up having gallstones. And so I had to have surgery. And so I like that took away like three or four months of school because I was constantly in the emergency room and I was super sick. So that took away from my eating disorder and everything and anxiety because I, it, that was just anxiety for other reasons. My sophomore year, I moved it back into college in Tucson and the day after I flew back to Chicago and I went and got treatment and I got help. I was out of school probably for, I don't know, two, two months. And I went for like intensive therapy for it. Um, and, you know, people don't realize how badly an eating disorder can affect you. Um, every day that I woke up, I just... It was I just the constant negative self talk. You know, I'm fat. I, I can't get dressed in the morning. I look horrible. I'm ugly. I'm disgusting. I'm this. I'm that. And then I don't want to eat. And then if I eat, I want to like throw it up because like how could I eat? Like that's only gonna make me. It was just it was a mess, and it caused so much anxiety to the point that like I I was depressed and I I needed help. And so that's kind of my journey. So to my sophomore year, that's when I finally really went for like intensive therapy. So it was like a live-in type facility? It wasn't live-in. I lived, I went back to Chicago. I lived at home, but I would go every day from like 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And it that that's what it was. I, I, I left school to do that. Um, I did, when I was in I want to say, I don't remember exactly what age, maybe eighth grade, I was supposed to do a live-in um, therapy, uh, what, what do they call it, live-in? Uh, like a residential program? Uh, treatment, yeah. Yeah, um, I did not end up going. Um, I got really afraid and somehow talked to my parents out of it, uh, because it's, it's really scary, I mean, as a kid, too, to have to go and leave home and it, it, I didn't end up going. I probably should have, um, but I didn't. So that was the first time I did it, and it it helped was in college. It, it definitely helped. Um, but with eating disorders, I mean, it doesn't – it's something you constantly have to work on. It doesn't just go away, you know. It's kind of like anxiety. Like you might – for me at least, you know, I, I, it's improved, but it's not gone. I still get anxiety. It's all how you deal with it. So, you know, the biggest thing was learning how to face the the deeper rooted issues um, so that I could stop this behavior, which was harming my body. And um, it's, it's something that so many people go through. So I, I'm glad we're talking about it. What tips and tricks, what tools helped you? Because you're right. It's not an eating issue. It's an emotional no. issue. What right. helped work on that for you? The, what things worked for you the best? What's in your toolbox? So when I was in this treatment, what I basically, I had, I, I learned self-care. And like we keep saying, you know, like eating disorders, it's not about the food, but you're taking it, you're taking out whatever anger, or hatred or negative feelings or, or just negativity out on yourself. So how do you learn how to love yourself? Because that's what's going to, aside from, you know, figuring out the root of the issue and battling that, like, how do you learn to love yourself? So that was my whole thing. So one, it started with journaling. So I started, I was so against journaling. Everyone always told me to journal. And now if you read half of my blog posts or listen to my podcast, that's all I talk about. But one day when I came home from Arizona that day, I sat down with a journal and I just started writing about what I was going through, what I was feeling, because I had hit, I thought I had hit rock bottom before, but this was like, I hit rock bottom. Like I did not know what I was doing with my life. And so I started journaling and journaling. I like, besides from my dog who recently passed away, I say journaling and my dog saved my life. So journaling is number one, because you have a lot of realizations and you can just get out everything that's in your head. And then also practicing, you know, gratitude. That was really important for me um, just to realize what I was grateful for and what I really had in my life. Because when you're caught up in that negativity and those just in all of those bad feelings, you forget about all of the things you're fortunate for, whatever that might be, even just waking up that day. So gratitude was a really, really big thing for me. And then also just, you know, 
taking care of myself, doing things that I enjoyed, um, you know, something else that really helped me, um, that's in my toolbox is podcasts and motivational videos. So, um, that kind of helps me to kickstart my day. Basically what I did was put together a routine and that routine I still follow today. So I have like a morning routine and a nighttime routine and it's all about self care and it's all to make sure that I'm feeling good. Um, and by doing that, I started to realize that I felt better. And when I felt better, I wanted to take better care of myself. And then I realized that, you know, my self-worth was, I, I had, I felt better. So my, I had better self-worth or I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, my, my self-esteem went up and, um, and that's basically what I did. So it all comes down to journaling, gratitude, you know, find things that inspire you. And, you know, another thing that really helped me just like a bonus tip is my dad actually told me, why don't you write down a list of your accomplishments? And at this time, I really didn't feel like I had any. But as I sat down, there were a lot of things that I did, you know, I went to school every day, almost every day. um, Despite the bullying, I tried to stand up for myself, you know, I got into a school that I wanted to go to, Um, you know, I made it past this, this and that. And when you see these things, it just starts it helps you to believe in yourself. And that was a really, really big thing for me. So those are things, they're little things that you do that show self-appreciation and their habits and their things you have to get used to. Um, But aside from that, it's really also figuring out the root of the issue, which is what journaling helped me with. So long story short, that is what I did. um, And that is what I continue to do because it's not like a one-time thing or a one month thing. It's like a, it's a lifestyle change. You really have to change the way that you were before to, so that you can become, you know, a better version of yourself and and feel more fulfilled. It is a lifestyle. I mean, anything that you eat is a lifestyle diet. Doesn't mean that you're starving. It's just what you put in your mouth. It's all about lifestyle. I think so. I love that. It was a lifestyle change. Yeah. 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 It's a maintenance. It's not a one and done. There's no magic pill. No. Right. And that's what people don't understand. It's not like a, okay, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? No, it's a lot of hard work and it's, it's painful and you have to face things and you have to form new habits, which even if you don't have an eating disorder or anxiety or depression, changing your habits, it, I wouldn't say it's painful, but it's really hard. I mean, it's, it's fucking difficult to change your habits. I mean, it's not easy. So like it, it, everything, if you want something, if you want something different for your life, you have to take action. You have to do it consistently and you have to think of it as a lifestyle change. Otherwise you are not going to get to where you want to be. It's just, it takes consistency, dedication. You really have to be committed to what you want and willing to go through the ups and downs because it, just because you start journaling and you might feel good one day, doesn't mean you're going to feel good the next. It's you got to keep going and going. It's a lifestyle. When did the suicidal feelings and thoughts dissipate or change? As soon as I started implementing these new habits. So when I left school my sophomore year, um, I went and got help and I started putting these routines in place. Um, I started to realize my self-worth and I felt better about myself. I ended up going back to school for the rest of the year. And while I was at school, it actually, it helped me so much that what I did was I realized college wasn't for me so what I did was I dropped out of school and I signed up for classes individual classes to help me learn new skills and things that I was interested in for example I I was big on challenging myself because I was like whoa I just got through all of this like I'm going to challenge myself because this is what I want in life I want to make a difference you know I didn't know exactly how I was going to do it but I knew I wanted to do something so I took a public speaking class which obviously I was terrified of I took a comedy improv class which I was terrified of I took a business leadership class which I was interested in and then I also got a job at a boutique 
to teach myself sales. And I wanted to become the best salesperson there was. I wanted to learn skills. I wanted to learn how to communicate with people, how to talk with people, because that's something I struggled with my entire life was communication and facing my confidence and everything. So what I did my sophomore year when I came back was I kept up with these habits and I changed my life and I was committed. And that's what I did. And then one day I sat down and asked myself if I could do anything, what would it be? And it was to move to Miami. And I did that. And I I started a marketing agency and now this uh, anti-bullying campaign, wellness, self-care blog, you know, resource. And this is where I am now. But uh, that, that was, that's what ended up happening. Yay. I just read an article. I love it. It's so exciting. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> well, you did things that took you outside of your comfort zone, but but were things that you wanted to, one, improve about yourself, or two, like, right. you know, I want to be able to talk to people better, so I'm going to put myself in uncomfortable positions so that I have to learn how to talk to people. And it's not in high yeah. school anymore. I mean, it doesn't mean everybody's going to be nice, but you're not in that the same situation. So, and oh. I, I love, I just read an article today about how a woman was going to do an English, she was going to be an English major because she scored so well. And, but when she looked at the classes under the major for like English lit or whatever it was, it just didn't spark anything for her. So she just she right. stopped looking at degrees and started looking at classes that she thought would be really fun to take. And this is what I tell my kids. Like when you go to college, take every class you think looks interesting. Don't care about what you're going to do with it. Just take it. And she did. And she ended up being in a completely different major, like a, a journalism, not com not way, way off from English, right, but right. where she was learning how to like edit video and do photography and, and write, but from a journalist perspective, and she was just telling people, if you look at the classes that you're interested in, that either push you out of your comfort zone or that you kind of excite you a little bit, you, your, your major, what you'll do with it will fall into place. People kind of do it backwards. It does. And a lot of people don't realize that because, you know, that was another thing grow, like growing up for me, you know, why I had all the, because going back to your question about how, when the suicidal thoughts stopped and everything, but a big part of that, aside from bullying, was that my mindset growing up was just completely different than all of my peers. So I struggled. I didn't understand, you know, if I took an art class, for example, and the art teacher changed my artwork, I would be the kid that would say, why are you doing that? Like, that's my creativity. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I just, I, it was very difficult. So we're, we're basically trained to all take the same path in life. And I just didn't fit on that path. And that was hard too. And that totally was a blow to my self-esteem. So when I got to college, I did what that, basically what that girl did too. And I think it's so important that people realize when you're going through college or you're, you know, getting out of high school, like this is your time to learn, to explore, like a degree doesn't necessarily define you. And I think, you know, bringing everything full circle, you know, my experience with indulging in self-care and learning how to love myself and go, it made me realize that it made me realize that not everything, not every, not everything's so black and white in life. And there are other ways to go about life to get what you want. And, you know, I wish more people would realize that because when you start doing things that are different, it's interesting. You learn because, you know, when you're past the past your twenties, you don't want to be doing that. So I always say take advantage because that's what I did. And I, I'm grateful for that. You decided that moving to Miami was what you wanted to do and you were ballsy and did it. So good for okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> was it what you, I mean, I know you're still there and you launched yes. a marketing company. Was it everything you thought? Was it a struggle to make that transition? Yeah. Everything in life is definitely, everything worth having in life is definitely a struggle. Um, Miami wasn't random. My family lives, I don't know if, if you're familiar with Florida, but in the Boca area. So I grew up coming here. And so I chose Florida because it was always my happy place. So it was always like my escape, you know? And so Miami, I was like, okay, it's younger. Boca's older. So I was like, I'm going to move to Miami. When I first moved down here, I really struggled um, because it was really hard to meet people. And it's actually been five years, five years in, in, August, in August. So I've been here for five years, but 
I had a hard time and I knew some people and I remember going out one night and with a group of girls that I was somehow knew I, I, I was connected through family, friends, I don't know. And, um, this one girl had been living here for three years or something. And she said, this was the best decision I ever made. And in my head, I was like, what, how I just, I didn't get it. And it was kind of ruining my happy place. Um, I was like, Oh my God, this is horrible. Like I used to think of this as it was a struggle. You know, I was trying to figure out life. Like I didn't know I was going to own a marketing agency. One thing kind of led to the next and that's how it happened. But I would say I struggled for the first six months. I met my boyfriend within the first three months of living here and we've been together ever since. And, um, but now despite the struggles, cause you know, as a business owner, it's, I have my fair share of struggles still. And, um, you know, in a different way, of course, just like any other entrepreneur, but, um, it is, it is what I thought it, it's, it, it still is my happy place. And, you know, I, I lived, I live right on the beach, um, which is what I always dreamed of. I met someone who, you know, accepts me and loves me and we have fun together. And we're like, I, I, you know, it's been amazing. I get to own my own business. Like I get to help people. I'm kind of living right now what I dreamed of. There's still obstacles and there are still struggles every day, but I'm kind of living that life that I, I, I wanted. So yeah, at first it was tough, but like anything else some you do, it doesn't matter what city you're in. You could stay in the same city. I could have moved back to Chicago. I could have stayed in Arizona. I would have had the same struggle because I, you know, you're not in school anymore. It's just like kind of going out into the real world. So it was tough, but yeah, Florida is kind of, it's not what I thought it would be, but I made it happen and I created a life for myself so that it is what I wanted it to be, if that makes sense. Which is the most important thing. And right. now I want, I want to, to ask how you got into marketing and where that went <laughs> and where did that come okay. from? Cause that's one of the, hard, like a few asked me what's the hardest thing about anything I do. If it's, it's yeah. either going to be branding or marketing, depending on the day, finding the words and then having people find you that's you're either really great at it or you have no freaking clue. So I want right. to know just so, how you landed yeah. in that and then let's connect the dots. Yeah. So it's an interesting story. And I, I'm full, I'm a very out of the box person. So everything's kind of an interesting story. Uh, right before I left University of Arizona, I, I don't eat Chinese food, but for some reason I had Chinese food and I didn't know what I was going to do. I just knew I was going to move to Florida and I figured I'd just get a job until I figured it out. I had a fortune cookie that said, you are going to do amazing in real estate. And I was like, that sounds pretty interesting. I was like, I'm going to get my real estate license. I know it's super random. I am random. Like I don't, I own that. I love it. I'm random as I, you know, what's interesting is that growing up, everybody told me how weird I was. And once I grew up, I realized I love that about myself because, because of my randomness, like I, I'm here today, like, you know, it's part of life. It's like an adventure. So I moved to Florida with two suitcases. I, I came down here and I got a job that day at a boutique. I got my real estate license and I ended up doing real estate um, down in Miami. After at first I realized, you know, I was really good at getting the clients. I did not like the rest of the process. I did not like doing the showing. I liked seeing the cool houses in Miami, but it wasn't my thing. I didn't like doing the negotiating or any of that. And then within my first few months, I sold over $5 million in real estate without knowing anyone in Miami. Uh, my No family connections are like down the South or anything. Like my family's up North. So, um, people wanted to then work with me with the marketing, um, to help them get the clients. And then I, I get the clients and then they close the deal. And I was like, I don't know. I, and I was like, maybe I would like it if I worked for a broker, you know, as his assistant and get some experience. Maybe I didn't like it because I just didn't know what I was doing, which I didn't. And, but I somehow managed to make it work. Um, and so I, had a friend who said, I know someone, a broker who's looking for a marketing director. I did not go to school for marketing. I am a millennial. So I know how to use, you know, technology, but like, I, I didn't know marketing. So I was like, you know what, as Richard Branson says, if an opportunity presents itself, take it. And if you don't know how to do it, you know, figure it out or however he says it. 
So I did. I went in for an interview. I did my research before. I nailed the interview. I created a marketing plan, and I got the job as the marketing director of a luxury brokerage in Miami Beach. So I took that year to learn everything about marketing that I could, and I was only getting paid $25,000, and it's a little bit expensive to live in Miami. So, you know, they kept promising me a raise, promising me a raise. It didn't work. And eventually, I decided to create my own company because I had people asking me, can you do my marketing? And I was like, yeah, sure. And so I created my company called The Marketing Firm which is my actual, which is my career, how I, how I make money. My other stuff is my, my passion. Um, but yeah, so it started off. Um, so I, I started a business from scratch. Um, and that's how I got into my marketing company. And I was, I, I, I guess I'm pretty good at it, but, um, yeah, I had to learn and I taught myself everything and, and it's been an adventure, but I continue to educate myself every single day. And I have, I started off with just clients in real estate and construction, um, but now I have other clients like bloggers, hotels, athletes, um, and and others, and restaurants. And that was kind of my journey. <laughs> I, didn't I was hoping that was your journey. I, I think that's <laughs> exceptional. So this is something that I'm going to point out that, of course, I'm hoping other people haven't point it, pointed out, but for the kid that was bullied and just wanted to be seen, that's what you do for other people. It, that's interesting. Yeah, that is what I do for other people. I do you help, help them be seen. be seen the way they that's want. That's a good way of looking at it. Yeah. So how cool is that? Yeah. I have actually, no one's ever brought that up to me and I've yes. never thought about it that way, but yeah, I do help. Up. Yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> Yes, and you, you just gave me them. something to think about. <laughs> yes, okay. Well, good. That's good. So it helps them to get seen the way they want to be seen because that's a different. Right. Yeah, the way we present ourselves or the way we muddle through it. I mean, you've got to listen to them enough to understand them so that they're seen in right. that way. Yep. And so. that's one of my strengths is really understanding people and, you know, what their goals are. And I, I really like to take the time to listen um, and build those relationships and connections. So that I, I mean, I've always been passionate about helping people. And I guess, I guess this is a way of helping people in their business so that, yes, yeah, so what they see. Thank you for that, actually. That You're was a good welcome. way of... Good. I'm, I'm big on perspective. That's, it's just, I think it's really astonishing and amazing that you're helping people feel the way you did it in a business standpoint. And then for your passion you. project, because some people don't realize that podcasting and blogging and even being an author doesn't necessarily pay the bills. So your passion project no. does it from a different angle in a way yeah. that you can help anyone. It's not about Joe marketing his business and you helping that happen and getting paid for it, it's in a completely different way. But even like your money making job and your passion job are both completely and totally aligned because you're helping people get seen and feel valued. Right. What? Yeah, no, it's very interesting. <laughs> a good way of putting it. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. I think it's so exciting that that's what you're doing coming from how you felt and where you were and a way of giving yeah. back. From the yeah, that's my. I love to give back. That's a big part of my life is is giving back in other ways. I always grew up volunteering and helping, trying to help other people, and and so that's that's a big part of my life. For that girl that was like you, no matter her age, that felt like you did at those lowest moments, when you were feeling suicidal and having the eating disorder and all of the anxiety, and we didn't go into the anxiety very much at all, but I, I think we hit really big, huge things. And knowing that yeah. it's going to be a life change and journey, what would you say to that younger Sydney or that, that woman that's struggling? So it's funny you say that because I actually just wrote a post and did a podcast about, I think it was 10 things I would tell my younger self. Oh, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll pick that. one. <laughs> I'll, so I'll you pick can one, see that but... post on Sydney's website. <laughs> Yeah, I'll pick one um, because there's so many. Um, basically, that I, everybody always tells you that everything's going to be fine and work out. And, I mean, at least in my life, my parents always did, but you don't really believe them. And because it's like, how do you know? Because life is so uncertain, right? But if I could go back and tell myself something, it would probably be that everything is going to work out 
that you cannot give up and like to follow your gut feeling because I am big on following your intuition. Your intuition just knows what you want. And I have followed my intuition to this day and it has led me to where I am despite any obstacle I have faced. So just, you have to keep with it. So, you know, that's exactly what I did. And, you know, as someone who, you know, was, suicidal and dealt with all of these things like my gut feeling just said don't give up and I didn't you can't everything will work out it's life is what you make it and so that's what I would tell my younger self one day when we have kids that's what I will tell my kids if they're ever struggling it's what you make it and life is what you make it and you cannot give up otherwise you fail I mean you fail the sec uh, there's no such thing as failure unless you unless the second you give up that's when you fail so that is myself. the perfect place to end. Thank you so much for <laughs> being and so much for sharing, Sydney. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate this. This was a great conversation. Thank you for taking the time to get naked with us. If you'd like to bear it all with me, 